Good morning. Good morning. I think I said that to a few of you, but I, I, I want to get all of you at one time when I say it. I'm glad to be back here at Gumlog. Uh, Brother Robbie made these arrangements several months ago, I think. And uh, I was complimented that he would ask me to come and uh, stand and, and try to bring God's word, a uh, message from God's word to y'all. And personally, I do count it a privilege, privilege to be here and uh, a privilege to try and share a portion of God's word. Now, this morning, I'm going to share a passage of scripture, the Lord willing, that y'all are all very familiar with. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 15. We're going to look at verses 22 through 28. I'll give you a moment to turn that in there if you want to follow along. Matthew 15, beginning in verse 22. If you turn there, you'll, you'll, you'll note it. But beginning in verse 22, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My Lord, my daughter has a grievous, is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And he, me, Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent but to the house but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from the same hour. Will you pray with me? Most gracious God, and our Father which art in heaven, it is indeed a privilege that we have to come into your house. Father, we know that thou uh, livest within us. But Lord, you've also commanded us and given us the privilege to come in together, together in our house. As our church, our local church. Now, Lord, I thank you for these here that are called at Gumlog. And Lord, I pray your blessings continue upon them. Father, I pray your blessings upon Brother Robbie as he's traveling. Give him safe travel to, to wherever he was going and safe travel back. And Father, just bless, bless them as they continue to serve you here at Gumlog. But now, Father, I ask your blessings, immediate blessings, that you would come and get down and be among us this day. Bless me as I try to speak. Bless the thieves who are gathered, that they might hear, and that it all might be to your glory. Father, I would continue to hold the sick and afflicted and troubled and distressed up to you. Bless them according to their need and our will. And now, Father, we do ask continued forgiveness of our sins. We ask all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you look at verse 28, this last verse of this passage centers on one item. It centers on this Canaanite woman's faith. But as I read this passage, did you notice that Christ is actually testing her faith. He at first seemed to ignore her. And then the disciples tried to get him to send her away. And then Jesus tried her faith by telling her that he was only sent to the Jews. And then after that, he made what we might today call a derogatory remark to her. 
or rather to her people. Now that did not just mean Canaanites, it meant all of the Gentile nations, but he referred to her people as dogs. Now all this fascinates. And then we find Jesus praising this woman's faith. And he honors her, her plea, and she casts out and casts out that devil which was vexing her daughter. All because of her faith. If you read this lesson over and over again, you would, or this passage of scripture over and over again, you would know many lessons that can be found in it. But the one that has stood out to me is that it's a lesson which encourages us to be persistent in our prayers and in our desire to continue seeking after Christ. And, to, and it encourages us, encourages us to continue after the peace and the joy of the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> I want to look back at the woman's last remark. She said, truth, Lord, Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. This tells us that she knows her complete inability, if you will, to do anything about the problem that she's bringing to the Lord. She is in essence saying, Lord, I am relying on your divine power to help me. I'm relying on you to heal my daughter. What caused us? It's apparent right here that we, we know that she's a child of God. But what caused this child of God or any of us to have the confidence to trust in and seek after God when we're, we're, when we're going through trials and difficulties? You ask this person, they'll tell you one thing. You ask another, they'll tell you something else. And in fact, there are many, I'll use the word factors, that may come into play to encourage us in our prayers or in our pleadings. But faith and faith alone allows us to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith and faith alone for this woman was a factor was, or in, in, in her seeking after Christ as she sought to get him to heal his, her daughter. Her earnest plea for her child and her faith in the Lord's ability to heal her child brought her face to face with Jesus. And I want to read, look at verse 22 again. And I, and I believe that her words, the words that she spoke to him, were probably one of the most urgent pleas report, report, recorded in the New Testament, looking at verse 22, and this is what she said. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She knew who he was. She knew who she was coming to. She called him Lord. She called him son of David. And this is what has been prophesied of him. She knew who he was. And then she said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I know that everyone in here, everyone in here would make this same type of plea if necessary, should one of their, other, their children or any of, any of their loved ones being in such, such, a, such a situation. I believe we all would. The theologian and, and great teacher uh, and preacher of the past over in England said, or let me tell you who it was, it was Charles Spurgeon. He said, said about this particular plea, prayer that Christ was dealing with, he said, this prayer came red hot from this woman's soul. What did he mean by that? He, he said this was not an idle, repetitious prayer from a from this woman, but it's a 
fervent prayer from her heart. Now, as we look at this woman, and she's come before Christ, we see her faith. But this woman also had, uh, had some other ad admirable attributes. She was earnest. She was humble. She was sensible. She was wise. She was prudent. Her earnestness, as intense as it was, was not enough to carry her through her daughter's illness. We look at her and we see that she's a humble woman. And this helped her greatly, I believe. I want you to think back to the dog reference. At that time for the Jews, the dog was an unclean animal. It was almost a almost treated, considered vermin. And if back like then, if you call somebody a dog, probably much the same today. If somebody, uh, if it had been me and somebody back then, somebody had called me a dog, or, or even today, if someone calls me a dog, I might be I would probably be, be offended, and I probably would not have. Reacted in the same way that this woman did. This woman, instead of taking offense, continued to pray for her child. I believe in her wisdom and her prudence, she knew not to reply harshly. But she took the words of our Lord and she used them in verse 26. And she replied, saying, well, this is what Jesus said first. It is not me to take children's bread and cast it to dogs. But she took these words and, and came back to Jesus with them and said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs will eat off the crumbs of their master's table. And she continued to plead for her daughter. Now, these attributes, these attributes which this woman exhibited, they're, they're all very, very desirable attributes for anyone of any age. And I believe we should be praying that, that we might be blessed with these attributes. But, and I believe this is a very big but, but without her faith, without her faith, and I, I remind you that faith is a gift of God, without her faith, her other attributes would not have gotten her the blessing that she desired for her daughter. As Christ looked at this woman, he saw all of these things. She saw her face, she saw her fruits, her wisdom, uh, and, and those others. But when he looked at these attributes, what did he comment on? He commented on one. What did he come and not comment on? He did not say, <coughs> excuse me, Christ did not comment on her love or her eagerness for her daughter. He did not say, great is the wisdom and restraint which you have shown here in your plea. He went to, straight to the heart of the matter. He says, O oh, woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. Now, I want to kick a minute and, and, and remind you, I, I, I'm going to keep going back to this. This is not a Hebrew woman. This is a Canaanite woman. This is a Gentile to whom has approached Christ. But then again, there are other people who were Gentiles who came and approached Christ. If you will, look at Luke chapter 7. seven. Going to look at verses 2 through 9. We have a Gentile of power who sent unto Jesus. Reading there in Luke chapter 7 and verse 2. 
And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he is worthy for whom he, he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was not now, now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble thyself, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my, under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto you. See the humbleness of this man? Yet he's a man of power. But see, and then he says, uh, relate, it's related to Christ. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. That's faith. Lord, you don't have to come. You don't have to be present. Just say the word, Lord, and my, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So man, Jesus is, des is describing this man's faith as greater than he has found in Israel. Yet this man was a Gentile. This man was a Roman centurion, a man in charge of over 100 men in the, in the Roman army. Both this Roman centurion and this Canaanite woman had received the gift of faith which again, I point out, was not of themselves, but as Ephesians, Paul writes in Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. So we know that whatever faith we have is, is a gift to us. But I want to continue looking at some of these other attributes. And, well, I want to call them attributes. I, I want to call them something. I want to call them graces. These other graces, as I said, are wonderful to have. But they are not enough, or they were not enough for this man or, or that, that woman, nor are they enough for us to support us through times of trouble. Our God-given faith supports these other graces. Faith does not depend on these graces. Faith does not lean on these graces. Faith is what supports us in darkness. Faith is what supports us when we, or rather when it seems that our prayers are not being heard. Faith supports us when we, were our, when we get rebuked as this woman was. faith supports us when the answers to our prayers come back no. I hold up Paul to you there in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. And Paul wrote this, he says, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul then added, Most gladly, therefore, will I, shall I 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, we are told here that even though God says, answers our prayer with, with a, a no, his grace is going to be strong, is strong enough to, for us to abide in. Our faith through grace strengthens us. Our faith through grace compels us to reach out and, and just take a hold of Jesus. It brings us, it brings us a new light in our lives. It brings us new life. It gives us a new strength. Like I said, it just makes us want to reach out and grab a hold of Jesus. Grab hold to him, get his attention and say, Lord, help me. A couple more examples that I want to look at. Um, the first one I want to look at is where a man begged for the Lord's blessings. You know, are familiar with man. His name is Jacob. He was later named Israel. But you remember, he wrestled a man all night. And when the dawn was coming, he earnestly prayed for a blessing before he would let that man go. And he was blessed because of his faith. He was blessed because of, the, because of his perseverance. That reference is found in Genesis 32, uh, beginning at verse 24, if you want to read it later. But it was because of his faith that, this, that he, like the woman of Canaan and this Roman centurion, was blessed. It was not for his perseverance. It was not for his strength. It was not because of his wrestling ability, but he was blessed because of his faith. The question comes now, have I shown my faith? I pray that I have, and I pray that I have shown y'all this morning that faith can stand alone. But then I'll turn around and ask, should faith stand alone? I don't believe faith should try to, we shouldn't try to make faith stand alone. Because faith is a gift. And a gift as valuable as, as our faith is, if it is not displayed, if it is not used, it has no value. Can I, I'll use this as an example. I have several suits hanging in my closet. But if I leave them hanging in that closet and I don't take them out and wear them, they're not going to keep me warm when I need, need them to. They're not going to make me appear any neater. If I just leave these suits hanging in that closet, what are they? They're objects cluttering up the closet. They need to go to a thrift store where someone else can use them. But for us, we have not been given faith to let it just hang in the closet. We have been given faith that is to be used daily to the glory of God and our own growth. I'd like for us to look what James says about faith in, in, in his writings in chapter 2 of his epistle. And it, it, it's here that we're told that we are to use our faith. He tells us to show our faith by our works. Uh, James chapter 2 verse 14. Reading down through verse 22. And James writes there, it starts with a question. Actually, one, two questions. He says, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, 
Notwithstanding, you gave them not, not those things which are needful to the, to the body. What does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, even so faith, if it is not used, if it is not displayed, is dead, being alone, it's hanging in a closet. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. Can we show our faith without our works? There's no, no way we can. Then he continues, And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, and thou doest well, doeth well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O man, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works faith is made perfect. This Canaanite woman that we started out with. She had shown her faith by her works. And it was her faith alone that delighted our Lord. We've got one more person I want to look at. Remember the woman who was diseased with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, verses 20 through 22. It reads, Reading there in verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within her head, herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Faith right there before we even get to the beat of what Jesus said. This woman had faith. Verse 22. But Jesus turned him, turned him around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer, good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from the hour. I said that Christ complimented her. And I don't believe that's the right word. It's not strong enough. Strong word is commended. Christ commended this woman. Christ commended the Roman. He commended the, the, the Canaanite woman. But in his uh, commendings, is that, is that the correct word? He didn't say a word about, well, she came from Canaan. This man came from Rome. This woman came from across the river. He didn't say anything about their struggles and the time it took to get there. What did he commend them on? He commended them on their faith. So this tells us that our faith and the exercise of our faith is important to Jesus. Because first, our faith glorifies God. Who has given us faith? And it's through faith that we believe on Him and trust Him and that we live for Him. Secondly, faith exhibited is God's appointed way through which we receive blessings. These three examples that I've used this morning are I don't want to say this. These three examples are, are, are show us the rewards that we have when we exhibit our faith. But again, going back to this Canaanite woman, we know basically nothing about her. All we know is that she was Canaan. She had a daughter who was vexed with a devil. We don't know her name. We don't know how old they were. What do we know? 
Christ said that her faith was great. Great is thy faith. As I read that passage, I, I, I said, I wonder how long she had waited to talk to Jesus. How long did this whole ordeal take that she went through when she first, after she first approached Jesus? I couldn't help but wonder if he, she had actually heard Jesus preach. Did she, had she ever seen him heal anybody before? Obviously, she had heard of it. I don't know. I can't answer those questions. But one thing I can tell you is that her faith was great. I'm going to call her a hero. And I feel like it's okay to call her that because of her great faith and because Jesus commended her for exhibiting it. It makes her someone we can look up to. This Gentile woman had received the faith, the measure of faith that Paul wrote about in Romans 12 and verse 3, where he says there, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The disciples, the apostle Paul, you and I and every child of God have received, received the same measure of faith. I've got another question, and again, I, I'm going to start with it toward myself. And I'm going to answer it as well as I can. But if you want to think about this question and answer it yourself, that's up to you. Is the measure of faith that I received any stronger now than when I was first blessed with the knowledge of Jesus Christ? If it's not, beloved, it's my fault. So I'm going to ask myself another question. Have I diligently exercised that faith in order to strengthen it and, and make it grow? Have I shown my faith by my works? Have I, have I tried to subsist on the milk of the word when I should be feasting on the meat of the word? The meat of the word is given that in due season it might strengthen us. My prayer is that my faith is strong. And I pray that your faith is strong. We all started on the milk of the word. But now most of us should be feeding up, feasting on the meat of the word. And my prayer is to that end. Beloved, as we leave here today, let us, as God commanded James, or commanded through James, show our faith by our works. And let us grow, let us strengthen that measure of faith that we have received through grace. Reading Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Canaanite woman, the Roman, Jacob, and the woman with the issue of blood were all rewarded through their faith as they sought after and as they tried to please the Lord. So, beloved, as we think on this, are we trying? Hymn of invitation is hymn number two seventeen. 
Hymn number 217 is our hymn of invitation. Is there anyone here who would like to unite with the Drumlog uh, Primitive Baptist Church? That opportunity is open to you. Have faith in God, hymn number 217. 